Welcome, glad to see all of the smiling faces out there. And wasn't that worship music wonderful? A perfect way to start a Friday evening. Thank you to our worship team. And um, I'd just like to share a brief message with you tonight as we prepare and we're, we're moving from the beginning of Holy Week through Good Friday into Easter Sunday. And I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you. Um, Bear with me. It's been a long week. The kids were ready for spring break. <laughs> and so were the teachers. Um, so I'd like to begin by just something we all know. This is just a reminder that Holy Week is meant to be a time of preparation. And when you reflect back on Jesus' life, his entire life was in preparation for this weekend, for this moment. And he knew his mission from the beginning of time but he's still prepared for it. And I'd like to also suggest to you today that not any detail of Jesus's life or any detail of his story was accidental or was random, but that everything in this book tells us was in preparation for his death and resurrection. So I'd like to look at something this evening that maybe we don't think about as much as we prepare for Easter. I'd like to look at the robe that Jesus wore. Um, If you look at, and you don't have to turn there, I'll read for you, but in John 19, verse 23 and 24, it says that when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said, rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. And this fulfilled the scripture that says, they divided my garments among them and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. The Bible wouldn't mention this robe if it didn't have some significance. And so when doing a little research, what I found is that in the Jewish tradition, the mother of the family made a robe for each of her sons when he was preparing to leave home as an adult and go out on his own or start his own family. And based on that, we can assume that Mary would have lovingly crafted a robe that Jesus wore. And that would be the same one that the soldiers cast lots for. And it would have been his finest earthly possession. Now, this is my opinion, so you don't have to take this. But in my opinion, I think it would have also served him as a a consistent reminder of the love that his mother and his earthly family and his earthly home had for him. And I think it would have been a reminder of his mission and a reminder that he was saving these people that he loved. The tunic that he wore was created without any seams, and it was woven from the top to the bottom. It was without any blemish, any fault, or any defect, just as Jesus was. It was created from the top to the bottom to show us how Jesus connected the top, heaven, to the earth, which is the bottom. And he was the only one who could serve as that bridge between the two. He was the only one that could fulfill God's word. He's one with God in spirit and mind, and he is Lord. He's on top of all, but he came to the earth as a man to the bottom where he served among sin and death, and he's the one that holds it all together. And just like the robe, the character of Jesus is seamless and perfect. And on the cross, he traded that perfection. He traded his tunic. He traded his cloak for the clothing of our sin. And so while the soldiers cast lots for his perfect garment, they missed his perfection. They focused on his earthly treasures rather than the eternal treasure he offered. And it wasn't his outward gifts or his miracles that they needed. It was him. And the same is true for us today. In that moment, Jesus surrendered his godliness to take on our sin. And he felt for the first time ever separation from his father, from his own true self. And when he felt the weight of that sin, he felt forsaken. But don't miss that he also felt compassion. Compassion for you and me. Compassion actually derives from two Latin words. And when you put them together, it means to suffer with. So as Jesus suffered for our sins, he loved us. And when he did... God responded through another garment. In Luke chapter 23, verse 44 through 47, it says, By this time it was about noon, 
and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle, and Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. God accepted the sacrifice that Jesus made through his perfection, and he responded by tearing the curtain of the temple and making the way for us to return to our Father. And at the time, the disciples and the observers of this couldn't grasp the full meaning of what had just happened. But Sunday was just a short time away when they would see for themselves and decide to live fully for Jesus. So as Easter approaches and we worship Jesus for his sacrifice and his mercy, we can remember that now we are fully clothed in God's grace and God's mercy and God's love, all because Jesus was willing to trade his garments for ours. And so we too can choose to live for him. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we're just so grateful We're grateful for your sacrifice. We're grateful for your mercy, for your love, most of all for you. This Easter, Lord, don't let us look just for your gifts and for your miracles, but remind us that we're to look to you because you're not on the cross anymore. You've you've given yourself for us and you're alive. And it'll be Sunday soon, Lord. We thank you. And we love you. Amen.